is Fox 58 News at 10. Sir, I've got to stick my finger inside your skull and make sure there's no loose fragments or, or shrapnel in there and this is going to hurt. And I said, go ahead, because it means I'm alive. So a National Guard major is hit directly by a rocket in Baghdad and lives to tell the tale. You'll hear his amazing story of survival. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Melissa McGee. You'll hear more of the local soldier's story from the battle zone in a moment. But first, it's the second anniversary of the Iraq War and ha has gotten off to a bloody start with terrorist attacks across the country. Militants in the oil-rich city of Kirkuk shooting a police officer and then bombing his funeral, killing three more officers. Terrorists also blew up a pipeline, cutting off links between the oil fields and the refineries. And a series of blasts in Baghdad near the Green Zone. No word yet on any injuries. Anti-war activists marched in the streets of American cities big and small today to mark the second anniversary of the war. In New York's Times Square, more than two dozen people marked the anniversary by lying down on Broadway and blocking all traffic. Flag-draped cardboard coffins were also placed on the ground near the Armed Forces Recruiting Station. Police quickly moved in and arrested the protesters. While some Americans may be protesting the war in Iraq, Major Russ Smith stands by President Bush in his decision. He survived a direct hit from a 122-millimeter rocket in January and was welcomed home just five days ago. Fox 58 reporter Stacey Cragen talked with him and his family about this life-changing experience. She joins us now with their story. Stacey. Melissa Major Russ Smith knows what it's like to survive a terrorist attack. His life changed forever the night of January 29th, the day before the Iraqi election. That's when a 122-millimeter Chinese rocket blasted through the American embassy in Baghdad. The warhead exploded and instantly killed two people and wounded two or three. The fuselage separated, hit the ceiling, ricocheted and hit me in the head and never exploded. It turned out to be a partial dud. Major Russ Smith was thrown to the ground by the force of the rocket and knocked out cold. The computer he was working on demolished. But his roommate, who was standing next to him before the explosion, was uninjured. He came to, he told me that he thought I was dead. I was laying face down. Uh, there was a, uh, a leg attached to a piece of body on top of me. I was covered in blood and not moving. He the next few days are a blur. Smith was transported to Germany, then to Washington, D.C., where he's been recovering for more than a month from a traumatic brain injury and shrapnel wounds, injuries that could have been much worse. All that's left now is a scar on the back of his head. It's a blessing, serious blessing, and I'm not sure if it was prayers for him or the, I almost feel sometimes it was prayers for me not to leave us alone without him. While recovering, Smith met many wounded soldiers. He says none of them regret their decision to serve our country. Every one of them would tell you it was worth it, and every one of them wants to go back. They want to get their prosthetics and go back to Iraq and do something and, and be back with their units and their buddies. So my view on the war hasn't changed. The president made the right call. Yeah, it, it doesn't look that big to you. Yeah, the computer looks like a sandwich. Inside the Smith home, welcome home banners are still hanging, and friends drop by frequently to wish him well. His homecoming is cause to celebrate. We had all of our friends here, and we were like, we were just happy, just happy. Major Smith does have some hearing and short-term memory loss as the result of his injuries. He was awarded the Purple Heart and has been nominated for two bronze stars. He has also been in the military for 25 years and plans to retire next December. Melissa? An amazing story. Stay